Today I'm going to address a audio myth that has been perpetuated in all sorts of forums and online, including on YouTube, uh, even in paid courses from people calling themselves professional mixers. Every time I hear about it, it just <laughs> it makes me angry and it drives me nuts to see that people don't quite understand this concept. So what we're going to take a look at today is sidechain filtering. So that's filtering the sidechain in dynamics processing. My name is Daniel Jason Booth. I'm a mixing engineer and I make videos about audio production, particularly geared towards mixing. I'm actually writing a mixing course at the moment. Sign up to the mailing list and uh, I'll be sending out a few different tips and tricks along the way, maybe little excerpts from the course itself. All right, so what is a sidechain filter? In this case, uh, what we've got on the SSL native uh, bus compressor, which I've just decided to stick on the drums, is a high pass filter built in, which is just the same as having something like this. Okay, so what it's doing is it's probably a bit gentler than that actually, is it's just high passing up to, I think goes up to 185 Hertz. Okay, but what this is actually doing, it's not meaning that you're compressing the low end any less. What it actually means is that it's removing that from what the compressor is hearing. So the side chain, the whole purpose of the side chain is so that you can craft the sound that the compressor is reacting to. Okay, so if we decide to pump that side chain up to 185, then what we're actually doing is we're taking the audio that's being fed into the side chain of this compressor and we're telling it to ignore everything or not listen to, not react to everything that's happening under 185 hertz. It does not directly affect the bass itself. So if I give you an example with the drums here. So this first example will be full bandwidth. So I'm not using the high pass filter at all. Okay, and uh, I'll set the threshold pretty aggressively. So you can hear every time the kick hits in particular, it's getting compressed quite a lot. What is, I can't read that. I think it's about nine or something, nine or 10 dB uh, gain reduction. That just makes it easier to see. You would never compress it this much unless it was like blended back in and parallel or something like that. Uh, but for the purposes of this example, it helps you to see exactly what's happening. Now, if I pump up the side chain so that it's filtering out the low end, which the kick is part of that, and there's a bit of low end from the snare drum as well. Watch what happens. Okay, again, with it off. Now you can see that it, how people will get the impression that it's not compressing the low end as much. It doesn't really work that way uh, with this particular type of compressor because this is a full bandwidth compressor. It is compressing all frequencies equally. So whenever you see that gain reduction meter work, it is turning down the entire lot, okay? The key thing that I want you to grasp is that once you start to employ this high pass filter, it enables you to uh, basically get the compressor to, to ignore some of the low end stuff. Because what will trigger the compressor? The compressor will be triggered by a lot of bass energy, typically. Bass has a lot of uh, power to it. It will also be triggered by things that are loud. We can see that the snare drum is actually making the uh, compressor react more. Um, it is not EQing it. It is not applying any EQ to the signal itself, it's just filtering what is getting sent into the compressor, what it's listening for, 
and it's saying, hey, don't listen to the bass. What it's essentially doing is doing something like this. So if I throw a high pass filter on it and let's make it 12 dB per octave and we'll put it up to that 185. This is what the compressor is hearing. Of course, if I take that out, what has more energy? The kick drum. So therefore, that will move the gain reduction needle more because that's the loudest, it has the most power, has the most energy. So to be clear, it's not the same as using a multi-band compressor. Let's get one of those up. Okay, so let's, for example, say that we have the crossover at 180, 180, oh, there we go, 185. Uh, but we decide that, well, let's just, let's just dial the threshold down so we're getting quite a bit. We might actually zero everything out. I might have a fast attack and a fast release. And can we, oh yeah, we get all the thresholds the same. Let's pull this down. And you can see it on here, like all of the energy is pretty much focused around this area. That is why when you high pass filter the side chain, you are ignoring that. In a multiband compressor, what happens if you bypass that particular set of frequencies is this happens. Which sounds nothing like That is a drastic difference. We are not affecting how much the bass is compressed. We are affecting the entire bandwidth. What it does affect is how much the entire signal is affected by the low end. So that's a really important distinction to make. So the next time someone says to you, hey, I'm, I'm high passing my, my side chain in my compressor, and therefore it's not compressing the bass as much, you'll be able to tell them, actually, that's not quite true because this is a full bandwidth, full frequency compressor. So what you're doing is you're only affecting what that compressor reacts to. Thank you for watching. I hope that clears things up. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Peace.